this week's episode of Grassroots Racer, we have someone who has achieved a lot in his time. He's raced in Target Tasmania. We'll talk more about that in the interview. With that, I present Matthew Harriet. Hey, how's it going? I'm good, Matt, and thanks for joining me on the pod tonight. So take us back to when you were 11 years old and tell us about the time you helped your dad bleed the brakes. Yeah, well, uh, it was uh, many years ago, but I was 11 and dad had an Austin Healey Sprite and he was preparing it for a hill climb event that was coming up. And whilst I was helping him, I realized that uh, if I'm helping bleed the brakes by pushing the brake pedal in every time he says to, then I can reach the pedal. And so I decided it was time to cash in on a promise he made that was when my feet could reach the pedals, he'd teach me how to drive it. Did you do your first race and where was it? Uh, well, my first race wasn't a race as such. It was what's called a motocana. Uh, they're short timed events that you run the car around a, a series of cones in certain patterns. Um, and it was in Canberra. It was actually on the hard stand at the airport, uh, which they used to close off on a Sunday and let the MG Car Club run their motor on. Yeah, that's really cool, Matt, because I'm actually doing my first motor this weekend out of bag shot. So that's going to be exciting. It's in the dirt and I'm going to be racing a home I gets. Yeah, it's a great way to definitely get started in motorsport. Um, teaches the, the very basics in car control. Obviously, you, the speed isn't necessarily there and you, you might not even change out of first gear in some of the exercises. Um, but the uh, to get in and get started, uh, motor carners or carner crosses as they may be referred to as well, uh, a great entry level motorsport category. Yeah, so that's how you definitely started it in motorcar or cartocross. Then you did some casual hill climbs. So wait, how long did you do hill climbs for? Uh, I started hill climbing when I was about 15 um, and followed that through until sort of 18 but also once i was 16 i started doing super sprints as well which is where you you're actually out on a racetrack and and driving as fast as you can uh but you're not actually racing um so super sprints are you're only timed against yourself uh and then your times are compared to others you don't actually race uh one-on-one -on -one against the other cars on the track at the time oh that's really cool because um one of my sponsors, United Security Alliance, he has a uh, like a redone 1999 Scape Richards car, and it looks really nice. And he does um, what's it, it sprints, I guess, and where he does like lap times around famous circuits. And he's uh, he was doing all right with it until he had some problems with the car. But you actually got into co-driving. So what did you co-drive and who? you co-drive with when you first started yeah so whilst i was enjoying driving and and competing in the the super sprints dad and i used to also assist in running the local rallies around canberra in the brindabella mountains and through doing that we got to know a number of the crews and eventually one of the the drivers said why don't you come along and and co-drive for me um, and i'd never really thought about co-driving before um, but I'd seen the, the World Rally cars or, or the Australian Rally Championship cars on TV on a Sunday afternoon on the, on the wide world of sports. Uh, and I thought, yeah, let's jump at that and, and take that opportunity. So I jumped in a 1997 Toyota, uh, sorry, in 1997, I jumped in a Toyota Corolla and had my first co-driving experience. So that must have been really cool for you. But as you were sort of getting into it, you stopped racing to train to be a pilot, which uh, I will admit would sound pretty fun to be a pilot. But then you returned because you were bit by the racing bug in a turbo four-wheel four -wheel drive Evo 3 in the New South Wales State Championship. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah, I took a about a three-year hiatus while I trained to be a pilot, which is my uh, career now and, and has been since I finished my training. Uh, but once I'd finished the training, that that bug of 
uh, adrenaline and speed was still there. And so I returned to rallying as a co-driver and picked up a, a ride with an old friend of the, the car club. And we competed in Evo 3 in the New South Wales State Championship. We had a fair bit of success, but we also had a fair bit of, uh, of unsuccessful events that year in 2009. Um, and so although we won a couple of the events, we also DNF'd a lot and due to engines or gearboxes. And so I think we finished fourth or fifth that year. But that was the sort of leg up I needed to get back into the sport. Uh, and from there, I started competing in the Australian Rally Championship uh, for a number of different drivers as well. Yeah, so that was really cool. Like once you got back into it, I guess you sort of got back into the racing roller coaster, you know, all the highs and lows. The year after 2009, you competed in Target Tasmania. Um, unfortunately, you had a DNF on day four, but how was that experience for you? And was it a bucket list item? Targa has always been a bucket list item for me. Uh, and I think it is for most people that compete in any form of rallying. Uh, it's a, an event on its own that is six days of um, competing and you circumnavigate Tasmania uh, from the north to the south, the east to the west on some of the best roads Australia has to offer. Uh, they're closed off to the public and we strap our helmets on strap ourselves into the car and, and go at, at top pace. So the opportunity to compete there uh, was amazing. Uh, unfortunately, yep, I DNF'd, uh, we blew an engine and um, with a day to go, there's not much you can, can do to fix that. Uh, and so that, uh, that year was unsuccessful for me, but it definitely lit a uh, switch in the, um, in the tarmac rallying side of things because everything I'd done previous was just dirt rally and now I stepped into this tarmac rally and again another bug bit and I just had to do it again. Yeah so in 2012 like you said you did come back for Target Tasmania which I think is uh, pretty lucky two chances so how'd you go that year? Uh, much better teamed up with a gentleman called uh, Dean Evans and we were in a Mitsubishi Evo 10 showroom car and uh, had an absolutely amazing event. Ended up fourth outright, um, second in our class. And because of that fourth outright, we won the, the 2012 um, Australian Tarmac Championship for showroom four wheel drive cars. Uh, but the highlight of that event, um, and even more so than setting an outright fastest time on one of the best stages uh, that I've ever competed on, which is Queenstown on the west coast of Tasmania. The absolute highlight would have been having Jim Richards come up to me and shake my hand and congratulate me because um, we'd come fourth and he'd come fifth. So there I was a bit starstruck that this legend of Australian motorsport, uh, not only had I had the opportunity to compete with him or against him, but he was now congratulating me on, on our great result. Yeah, it would have been awesome to compete with Jim Richards, you know, such a legend. So, um, was he competitive? Like... Extremely competitive. Even, even uh, back then, um, he'd even admit that he was probably slowing down a little bit from his younger years, but he was still extremely competitive and he, and he would always try to to find that extra second on every stage. Do you know how far off um, he would be around about in each stage to you guys? Uh, uh, we, we monitored it a little bit, but we were more focused on just making sure we could secure the, the overall championship for that year. Um, so we didn't watch his times too much until about the last day when we thought, okay, we'll try and keep him behind us for good now. So then you were back out in 2017, not at Tassie this time, but you were in a two-wheel drive. Um, so do you want to tell us a bit about how that year went or that event? Yeah, so in between, I guess, doing that and having the success of that, I was competing in the Australian Rally Championship on dirt. 
uh, every year since in, in a couple of different cars. Um, and then in 2017, I got an opportunity to uh, run with Steve and me in what they called the ARC2, which was kind of like a reserve grade, if you think of it from a football sort of analogy. It'd be like the VFL instead of the AFL. Um, we still went and competed at, at the same rounds as the Australian Rally Championship, but it was um, it was to encourage a lot of high quality state-based drivers up into the national series, into the national level. And it ran in a slightly different format, unlike most motorsport where you go to every round and you score points and the, uh, depending on how you finish at each round. And then at the end of the year, you are uh, the person with the most points wins. Um, we had a bit of a qualifying uh, scenario and then a final event where a winner takes all. So we qualified by competing in Victoria and, and South Australia and Canberra at the Australian Rally Championship rounds. And then the final was at Coffs Harbour uh, in conjunction with the World Rally Championship. You know, that probably would have been a cool year in 2017. You were still traveling um, around Australia a bit. So now you've moved into Formula V and um, you know, last year in COVID-19, we both competed for the CXC iRacing, like it was a race event, you know, like a championship and whoever won got a test drive in a CXC Formula V. Uh, but now you got your own and you're driving it pretty comfortably. So hopefully we can either race at Wakefield or Winton together. But how do you feel you're going with Formula V? Yeah, well, the, the Formula V came about because um, I got a job with uh, Virgin as an international pilot and I could no longer commit to uh, rally teams that I was always going to be available for each round of the, the championship. And so I wanted to, to still be able to compete in motorsport um, because that bug never disappears. It keeps scratching away at, at the back of you. And I looked around for a category where it was going to fulfill my adrenaline rush and my want and, and, and speed and, and competitive nature, but also not, uh, not sacrifice someone else if I had to pull out at the last minute because of a work commitment whilst flying. And so we found Formula V and um, we looked around for about 18 months to find the right sort of car, uh, being six foot four, I'm not the shortest guy and Formula V is not necessarily designed for us at the taller end of the height range. Um, but uh, about mid last year, so right in the middle of the pandemic and different lockdowns in different states and, and everything that was happening, um, I was a bit uh, down at the time because obviously being an international pilot, I'd been stood down and there was no um, international flying happening so I needed a morale boost and I found a car that I could fit in and so we purchased this 2005 uh, Formula V it's a Polar it's bright orange so it stands out and uh, I started driving it at some track days and then decided that this year in 2021 I'd commit and do the whole New South Wales State Championship yeah, that's brilliant, you know, that you got into it. And now you said you might come down at the end of the year for Winton at the Nationals. I'm pretty sure it is. So if I'm up to speed by then, I'd love, I'd love to come down either just to watch you or compete with you because, you know, you're, you've done a lot of things in your time and it'd be great to meet you in real life. We've done a lot of talking on Discord and Zoom, so it'd be great to meet you in real life. Thanks for joining me, Matt, this week. Uh, on Grassroots Racer. You have been awesome to talk to. Um, and also thanks to the guys who watch this and make it possible. Thanks everyone. Drive fast and take chances and good luck, Matt, for the future. Yeah, cheers, mate. And uh, you're welcome in the pit box anytime. All right, thank you.